Hi everyone, it's TTL back for another for another video for you. It's been a late night and I am late for an NDA, which I don't like doing, but the processor actually arrived with me an hour and a half before the lift. So time has been short. Enough of my excuses though. The new 5800X3D. Now I'm sure some of you will have seen reviews uh, of it already because I'm already late. So I'm going to cover this in the way that I normally do, and that's dumbing it down to the point where I understand it, not you understand it. I take the information, I absorb it as best as I can, and then I come to you and I talk to you about it. Uh, a bit like you would with a mate in the pub. Anyway, effectively, what AMD have done is they've taken a 5800X, which was quite strange, I will admit, because that was the one processor out of the stack that they didn't want to send me. Uh, originally, it just wasn't a processor that they were sampling. I've got the 56, I believe I've got the 57. I can't remember. See, I've got them up here so I can have a look. Actually, no, I've got the 5600X, I've got the 5900X, and then I've got the 5950X. The boxes are all up there. Um, so the 5800X was, wasn't something that they wanted to send to the media, but what they've done is they've taken that and then they put some L3 cache on the top of the CPU stack. Now there are two very visible chips on the top of the image that you may have seen. The big silver one at the bottom, which looks like the larger one, is actually the I.O. die. Um, and then the smaller one at the top is actually where the CPU itself is. Now they've, they've put the L3 cache on top of the actual CPU itself uh, in a 3D kind of fashion. Now there are many technical mobob things that they have done to make this possible. Now, I don't understand because at the end of the day I don't have a degree in all of that sort of stuff and a lot of you at home don't either um, and I'm not talking down to you or talking up to you or anything like that but uh, effectively because they've made it a bit thicker they've then machined down the rest of it so it can still all go underneath a normal die um, but what they have had to do is you can't do any overclocking you can't do any uh, multiplier changes any frequency changes yourself um, and uh, whatever memory you put in there is whatever memory that you put in there. I run 3600 megahertz in mine. And I actually use the Type G skill Trident Royal stuff that I got sent a while ago as well. Uh, Precision Boost Overdrive 2 does still work on paper. Uh, so they say you can get 3.4 to 4.3 gigahertz. Now I have to admit, I didn't see much performance moving at all, um, well at, at, at all, uh, my core speed didn't change at all, but, and I do need to stress this quite clearly as well, AMD send out some ballpark figures that your performance should hit, so for argument's sake, in Cinebench 23, they give you a score that their test system at their place uh, hit and that gives you a point to aim to to make sure that something's not wrong. Well, my score for Cinebench 23 was actually 100 points above the expected score that AMD gave me. So my system config and everything, it's actually running as expected, even with that um, core speed not moving, which I found quite strange. Now, I'd, I looked in single-threaded stuff, I looked in multi-threaded stuff, I looked in game results, and it just wasn't changing. Now, uh, they did stress very, very hard everywhere that this was a processor for gaming, and it very much is. And if you've seen anybody else talking about the possibility of scores being lower than they would have expected, I'm going to go with that as well. But there's a very good reason for it, because of that precision boost overdrive and the fact that you can't do anything. It's not necessarily going to be boosting at all to where it could have been as a normal processor. So it's not people you know, talking down about the product, it's just the way it's working and it's not working as well as the normal one would have. So uh, I'm going to have put uh, graphs and stuff up for you to digest. You can pause them and take a look at them. You can also go to the OC3D website to take a look at more graphs and pick them apart if you want as well. So production, anything that's not gaming is mediocre at best. And for the price of the processor, just isn't good enough. So that's that. I'm going to put that aside. If you're doing anything other than gaming, 
the price of the processor, you'd be better off buying something else. You'd be better off just going and buying a normal 5800X. Um, so we'll, we'll put that to bed. The actual gaming performance of the processor could be quite good. There are a lot of times when it has topped our graphs. Now, if the processor that you want to see is not in the graph, we've not taken it out. We've not missed it out. It's just it's not being tested in that. So for argument's sake, in Cinebench uh, 23, 5900X isn't in that graph because it, we weren't using that benchmark when we first tested the CPU. And we've just not had enough time to go back and fill in gaps and look for stuff that we haven't tested and build rigs specifically for it. So they've not been missed out. They've not been taken out. They're just not there because they've not been tested. Um, but the games could be actually very, very good. But then also there were things like Far Cry, for example, which were very, very bad. I'm going to say, though, with Far Cry, because it is an AMD game, I actually don't think that's running correctly. I've run that test over and over again i've checked all of the settings it's exactly as we have tested the last ones we put new graphics card drivers on um, something that i didn't say at the start that i should have done is you have to make sure that you've got the correct bios on your board to make the most of the processor as well i'm using the crosshair extreme and i tested it i changed all the bars and everything before i started everything was up to date um, Far Cry 6 just didn't like it. It's probably going to get fixed in a patch for the game. In fact, it will get fixed in a patch for the game because as soon as people realise it's not performing right, it's an AMD game, it will get uh, accelerated to be uh, resolved. <coughs> so we did uh, look into this quite a bit. I actually think I could do more, but because of the short time constraints, because of things arriving late, uh, it might be something we will have to revisit if you guys at home feel that we need to. So, to recap and to keep things quite short and sweet because I'd actually like to go and get some sleep, is that for gaming the processor can be very good. But it is very limiting in that factor in that it has to be gaming. Now I know a lot of you are going to game at home, but I also think Nowadays, with the fact that a lot of people are streaming, that will be impacted. A lot of people like to do things with um, uh, 3D printers, so you could be 3D modelling, and that is all going to be impacted. I also think for the price of the processor, you shouldn't have to be making so many compromises. I do think uh, the temperatures for the processor itself are very good. So what they've done for that to happen is actually quite good. So it then leads me to wonder why they removed the overclocking abilities and stuff like that. Does it, is it something that the, uh, uh, the cache can't cope with rather than it being a thermal problem? Because the thermals are very, very good. You could easily run this on a 120 millimeter air cooler and not have to worry. So, in, in reality, if you've got an older system like an X370 system and you're looking for a processor to possibly upgrade to and you are very, very gaming focused, then it might not be a bad purchase stroke upgrade for you. But if you do anything other than gaming, even something like a 5600X might be a good compromise because you're then going to get the best of both worlds. But if I'm completely honest, I personally would just be saying to you, maybe save a little bit more money. And then also, if you're looking to put it into an older system, maybe try and get a 5900X second hand on eBay or something and save yourself some money again. Um, so it's, it's almost like a proof of concept. They've proved it can work for gaming very well. It's clearly, or probably going to be something that they're going to explore and delve deeper into to see if they can make it work better with other tasks as well. Um, but as a proof of concept, it has done very well. It's just kind of very limiting. It almost feels like this is a project that they've done at AMD to see if it works, and then they're just selling it to us anyway. Um, it has and does have the capability of beating the 12900KS. So there's a bit of uh, Intel rivalry going on there. Intel have obviously gone clock speed, AMD have gone, well, we can't really compete with that, and it doesn't matter even if we did, 
So we'll try this L3 cache thing because then we're getting a better result in a different way. It uses less power, it creates less heat. The best way I can explain it is, or a good way I can explain it because I am a car person, is it's almost like this is kind of like a Tesla or an early battery powered car. The technology is there, but the range isn't that great. They don't make any noise and uh, it's a bit specific. Whereas like the Intel approach is almost like a V8, maybe with a supercharger on the top. It goes quicker, it goes further or it can do, but then you're creating more heat because of the internal combustion engine and then the noise from the exhaust and the fumes. It's a different way, a different approach. You kind of get there in the same way and in exactly the same way you get people arguing about it as well because you're going to get some people saying our oh, clock speed would have been better and you know at least we can do rendering and all that sort of stuff really really quick and fast and then these people are going to be oh, we're using less power and we're creating less heat and our games are faster than yours it's the same sort of thing and that's exactly where i'm going to leave it i do think it deserves an innovation award because they're trying something different they've gone about it in a different way it isn't perfect but for a first attempt you can see where possibilities in the future may go I do think though, if I'm completely honest, it should have been a bit cheaper. Because of the clock speed side of things and the limiting factor of it all, I do think it's a bit overpriced. But that is my tired, open, honest, and uh, kind of like a round point of view. I've tried to give you as many points of view as possible. But for now, this is the tiniest one. And I'm going to leave you with those thoughts and I'd very much like to hear your thoughts underneath. Uh, rather than cookies today or ice cream or cheesecake, we're actually going to say uh, whether you are batteries or uh, engines. You can literally just put that underneath and I'll know you've got to the end and congratulations for you for doing it. But for now at least, this is the tiniest one with another video for you out. Ding! Love you sis.